All right, now let's get started setting things equal to one another. So first thing we know is that these tensions are equal to one another. So force T one to two is equal to force T two to one. So we're just gonna kind of set both of those to be the same variable. We're gonna set them both to one, two. That same logic applies with force, force T two to three and force T three to two. So we're gonna set those both as the same variable as well. Force T two to three. We know this because when you have tension in a rope, if you have tension in a rope, one's going this way, one's going this way, and they're both equal to one another, that our tension is literally just whatever force it's going. So if this is 80 and this is 80, our tension is equal to 80. It doesn't matter if it's going left or right. So we can set both of them to be the same variable. Okay? Now that we know that both of these, 1 and 2 and 2 and 1, and 2 and 3 and 3 and 2, are the same thing. I'm going to erase this, and then set these both to one another. 1 to 2, and 2 to 3. So it's as if they're the same thing, because that's just defining your tensions. Now, sum of forces time. So, force, sum of forces in just the box number one. First of all, we have mass one, acceleration of the system. Why it's not acceleration of just one is because the entire system moves as a whole. Now we're going to do sum of forces two is equal to mass two, acceleration of the system. Why it's acceleration of the system? Same reason I just said earlier. Now, sum of forces on box three mass three, acceleration of the system. Now, this is also equal to something else. We're just trying to define things in our x direction because that's all what it's asking for. Tension is only traveling in this x direction. It doesn't go up and down because the strings aren't going up and down. So we can kind of omit the things that go up. So our force in the one direction, the only force that goes, the only force that goes in the x direction is our force of tension going from one to two. So that's all we need to write. Now on this one, things get a little more, more difficult. We have one going to the right. First thing I'm going to do before we even do anything from this point on is we're gonna set a positive and negative. We have positives and negatives. That means that this is positive, this is positive, this is negative, this is negative. This is positive, positive, negative. Negative, negative, positive, positive. This will make our sum of forces 10 bajillion times easier. Now that we have our positive and negative set, we have our force of tension, which is in the x direction, force of tension two to three, minus, because this is the negative one, force of tension one to two. Now we'll do our force in the third, in the third box. We have our force applied on box three, which is, we know, is 64 newtons, minus our force of tension two to three, because that's our negative one. That's why this one's a minus. Now that we've got our sum of forces, we can solve for our tensions, because this is all kind of one big set of equations that we can substitute into one another. Our sum of forces things here are kind of just guidelines. That, that tells us what we're describing, but this is our actual equations. This is the bread and butter of what we're doing. So we know that m1 of, m1 times the acceleration of the system is equal to ft1 minus, or not minus, but through two, t1 to two. So that means that in this equation, we can substitute this into this. So, we have M2, acceleration of the system, is equal to FT2 minus three, minus this thing, M1, acceleration of the system. Okay? Now, what we can do is we can solve for this T2, three. So what we can do from here is we can start to solve. 
our m2 is 4, our acceleration is 4, is equal to force t2, 3, minus m1 is 2, acceleration is 4, this is 8, 8 all adds over to here, this is 16, 16 plus 8 is 24. So, our tension between 2 and 3 is 24 newtons. That's how that one works. Now, we can do a very similar thing with this one now, if we're trying to find our 1 and 2. So we can erase this now, because this is all figured out already. Now, we're trying to find our t1 and 2. So we can pull this middle equation. We have m2a system equal to f t two thir two to three minus twenty four newtons because that's what we already determined our tension is. Okay, m two times the acceleration of the system is our m two is four times four is equal to f t two three minus twenty four. Add this 24 over to a 16, that gives us a 40. 40 is equal to Ft to 3. So our force of tension in that direction is 40 newtons. And that's it for determining the tension. If we wanted to determine the acceleration, what we would do from, from this original thing, without looking at these, if we wanted to determine our acceleration, things get a bit more complicated. So I'm going to cover that in the next video.